instead of just having tool calling, you can have the system prompt lean heavily on helping to attempt to manage the structured data piece, the structured output. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we can demo that if you like. So we have been, we looked at RAG quite heavily for clinical purposes, as well as we looked in other areas like project management aspect of it, requirements gathering, and then also financial documents. So one thing we found out in financial documents was that a lot of it has a lot of like a natural language text, but a lot of the data is also hidden within the tables itself. And that's where we found that large language models struggled a bit. If you throw a table at it, and if the table is simple, then it, it doesn't blink an eye. But as soon as you have complex table hierarchical setup, headers are getting repeated, weird manner and things like that, yeah. which is very, very common in any 10K filing or any financial. Or a lot of business reports, right? right. It's, it's, and this is where you've taken it out of Excel and you've now got the business report that you're going to have someone look at. You've put in a graphic of chart or table you're going to look at. And this is particularly what you're talking about. Well, what, that took us some time to build our own tooling around it. So how do you understand a table. So we had to start with scratch and come up with things that helped it understand complex table, not just simple like an Excel file table, but multi-tiered hierarchical table and something like that. So this is basically a table we picked up from financial, I think it's Microsoft. It's the Microsoft 2020. Yeah. I think. So if you ask a question, this document, let's ask a question and see what comes out of it. And then so I'm going to ask it about the foreign government bonds. Yeah. I fired off the question. We're going to see a response come back in a second. So let's open that file because that's going to yeah. be fun. Now, if you look at the document it has nothing but a single table i don't know if our audience saw that question and answering thing of it if you um, yeah they, they saw that okay. and then right. i switched then i switched so what i was going to tell you that basically it answers the questions and also cites the document from where it pulled and you, if you yeah. notice this document has nothing but tables on it no yeah. verbiage of any kind and some of these tables they look crazy you know the the headers are right on the top and then you have sub summations and then you have brand summations and all all that stuff going through right so you're still able to pick up the right numbers yeah. and pull that up. So this was a bit of a challenge for us, but I, I think this adds a lot of value for businesses where a lot of their data is locked into you know tables like that in their documents. Yeah, and we, we can see the loss was 24 million. And if yeah. we look across here, it was 24 million was unrealized loss. Yeah. And what's important about that is this is what takes work when using these tools, right? If you were just to throw this into a normal LLM or even a higher end tool like a chat GPT, you may not get this answer correct, or you may not get this answer the first try. And we, we know from the, the hard part yeah. of uh, seeing what happened. And then where this gets more interesting is you get different businesses with different levels of different types of documentation, whether it's table reading or other complex figure reading, 